Bring it to Anthony Slater, who's had to suffer through those last three minutes. Listen to that. Let's get to more pressing issues. I hope he laughed. (laughs) Anthony Slater needs a little laugh. He's been working all all day long. Kawakami, Marcus Thompson got him doing all the grunt work for the athletic. Anthony Slater, 95.7 Game Insider. Of course, we love him on the roast. Anthony, what's up, brother? What's up? How are you? Oh man, we're good, man. We got some we got some basketball news. Thought we was gonna have to suffer talk about the Giants today and how they lost a series to the Cincinnati Reds and split with the Tigers or two and three on his homestand. But we got action in the NBA, including Gary Payton the second moving on to the Portland Trailblazers. A three year twenty eight million dollar deal. I, I guess he can get up to thirty, thirty one million with this deal. So the Warriors, what happened here? What could the Warriors have done to keep Gary Payton the second here with the go to of course here in the Bay Area? I mean they could have paid him. They could have paid him up to I think it was like ten point five or ten point nine million, I think was the max they could have gone with full bird rights. Um, but they just opted to keep their offer around the taxpayer mid-level, about $6.4 million, only on like a two-year deal. And, and as you mentioned, I mean, Gary just went for three years, $30 million player option on the, uh, you know, backside of it. And, you know, I mean, we know the tax penalty. Yeah. We can go through the numbers if you want, but that's yeah. just the reality here. Well, what was the taxpayer numbers? If the Warriors would have offered Gary Payton a second $10 million for over two years with those bird rides, what would that have been like on the tax? Because they're under repeater tax. I mean, what is it, times seven now? So what would that yeah. would it look like here uh, for Gary Payton, the second and the Warriors, if they did give him ten year, ten million dollars a year for over two? Yeah, they're near seven. So you know, you're talking about nine, ten million. You're talking about between like sixty and seventy million per per season. By the way, if you're committed to a multi year deal, you're expecting to be in the tax next season. So it's like basically what we're talking like a. Uh, three years times that by sixty for me, a hundred and eighty million basically. Uh, you know, wow. if, if you match Portland's deal, wow. now you know that roster spot's going to go to somebody making a minimum, probably. So, like, it's not like you're you're still going to end up paying some amount of money um, to replace him, but you know, every single dollar, including the dollars they're probably going to end up ha- end up having to give the Looney, are just you know, getting taxed like crazy right now with, with payments coming soon, right? If there's a Wiggins extension, pools money will eventually kick in. So um, there's a limit, and, and and they've been transparent about it. Like Bob Meyer said at his press conference, what, a week or so ago, like there is some sort of a limit. And Anthony, you, you said Kevon Looney toward the end of your answer there, and that's what I was who I was going to ask you about. Uh, what's the latest with him? Are they any closer to a deal? What are they expected to sign him for? Is there any comparison within the NBA? I know Avika Zubats' name has been thrown around because he got an extension for three years worth $33 million, averaging $11 million per year. But uh, what's the latest with Kevon Looney? I would expect them to bring him back. I mean, nothing is finalized as of this moment. It wasn't last night. They're still a little bit apart in negotiations, as we reported on The Athletic. Um, but, you know, I, there's just kind of, I guess, the, the the distance between them right now is the reality of what you mentioned. Like, guys like Avika Zubac is getting three years, $33 million. Looney's very comparable to that, right? Starting center, solid player on a championship contender, you'd say. Isaiah Hartenstein got near $10 million. Um, there's there's various big men out there. I mean, Marvin Bagley got what three for thirty seven. I couldn't believe that. Pay. I couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> Which was an overpay, but you know, if you're Kevon Looney and you're looking at Marvin Bagley getting three thirty seven, you're going like, you know, that, like that's like how am I not getting eight figures? But the Warriors are looking at a market that's drying up that doesn't have. Uh, many teams with cap space out there, almost nobody left with the full tax pyramid level, and really only teams left that are contenders, the type of teams that would want a Kevon Looney, who is great in his role but doesn't really have, you know, I guess you would say Marvin Bagley potential, even though Marvin Bagley never met that potential, but you know what I mean. Uh, he, he just cannot turn into a pick-and-roll superstar. Um, so the Warriors are going, like, who's going to pay you beyond $6.4 million at this point? Um, so I think that is kind of where the separation is. They'll probably find some type of a middle ground, but I just think the Warriors believe they can get him back on a bargain, and the market is kind of leading them correctly down that path. How much does Looney want to be back? As we're talking to Anthony Slater on 95.7 Game Insider, how much does Looney want to come back? And if it is a discount, $6.4 million, what would that look like over the next two, three years? Obviously, it's going to be – Taxes involved here with the luxury tax, and I got a question about that coming up here in just a second. But if Looney, like, what else can he get out there? Because as you said, the market is drying up. I don't see any teams uh, like Orlando. He's not going to go there, right? He wants to play for a contender. 
Yeah, start for a contender. Just yeah. won the championship, you know. And, like, so much comes with playing for the Warriors. I, I mean, it's part of the reason Gary Payton II, like, struggled with that decision. Gary Payton II was not, like, you know, happily jolting out of town looking for a place. I mean, his preference would have been to stay, but the money wasn't the same. And, you know, it's similar with Looney, understandably. I mean, not only is he, you know, starting on a championship contender, but he just fits, like, what the Warriors do, like, you know. Steph Curry, in a lot of ways, protects him offensively. I mean, you could play two non-shooters when you have Steph Clay out there, Jordan Poole off the bench. So um, his desire is to remain. Um, but you know, part of part of the appeal of playing for the Warriors typically is you play deep into the playoffs, you help them win a title, and then you get a payday for it. I mean, most of his right. teammates have. And the crazy thing uh, for Kevon Looney over the years is he's always been kind of uh, neglected. You would say on mm-hmm. the market, right? I mean, remember mm-hmm. they. Uh, Declined his fourth year option. He has a great third season, but he still only gets the minimum. Uh, he had a great 2019 run where, remember, he even got hurt and played through that injury when Kawhi trucked him, but he was awesome that whole playoff. Mm-hmm. They gave him three years, $15 million. Couldn't get more than mini mid level that time. So, um, you know, they'll probably be working through some stuff, which includes maybe, he, like last time, he got a player option on year three. Maybe he gets right. a player option, but, I mean, he's just not going to get what the market says. He should get unless somebody comes in late and surprises and gives them a bigger payday that would maybe make the the Warriors you know have to up their offer because they cannot lose. Looney. Yeah, I was going to just ask you how big of a loss would Looney be with only James Wiseman as the lone center on this roster? Because a lot of people were freaking out over Gary Payton II. second. My priorities coming into the all season, Anthony, was Looney one, GP two, second. But a lot of people are freaking out over Gary Payton the second, and they're ticked off at Joe Laker for not going back into the tax for a guy like GP two. I don't get it. Well, I mean, look, I'm, I understand the idea of like billionaires pay whatever you can. I mean, they just make crazy money during the playoff run. They're you know ticketed to make insane money over the next half decade with a you know star studded team in Chase Center, and even when they're not playing games, they're concerts and you know they're making a ton of money but you know it's it's tough in my opinion to overly be overly critical of a financial decision like this when you take a step back and realize like they just paid a record tax bill they're about to pay a record tax bill the only owner anywhere near him in the ballpark in the league right now as far as payments is steve ballmer who's like what is he, like top five richest people in right. America? I mean, like, Joe Lacob's rich, but he ain't Steve Ballmer. Right. So it's just like, <laughs> like he, Joe Lacob continually has put his money where his mouth is. I mean, and, you know, he wasn't unwilling to bring Gary Payton back on what would have been a pretty steep tax penalty. He just didn't go that, that full level. And the reality is, I think they've been pretty transparent about it. There is a limit, and we're starting to reach the upper level of that limit because we're talking about a payroll that, Especially if Peyton came back, was was going to cost to- in totality like four hundred ish million, yeah. heading towards potentially five hundred million in the future if they try to keep this team together with a pool extension. And Anthony, in your latest article, you did mention Otto Porter Jr. and you said that he's currently contemplating a return to the Warriors on the veteran minimum, or we could get more money elsewhere. Do you think that the uh, that the new deal for GP two and uh, you know the fact that they already got him off the team, off the roster, got him off the luxury tax? Do you think that Otto Porter Jr. could be making more than a veter- than the veteran minimum, or do you think that OPJ is still going to be getting that veteran minimum no matter what? I mean, I don't know for sure, so I, I don't want to report like you mm-hmm. know definite on this. Right. But I, 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 my sense is it's really just a vet minimum offer because the one thing in the league about a vet minimum offer is you know let's say Auto Porter's veteran minimums I don't know the exact number, but I think it's like high twos, like two point eight or so. You know, it's it's still pretty good money, two point eight million. But if you keep it at the vet minimum, the league does not tax you on anything above with like a normal minimum, like one point something. So like you save a lot of tax money by having it as a vet minimum. Whereas if you go a dollar above the minimum, then suddenly every dollar gets taxed. So like, you know, as they try to maneuver around this roster, as they make small moves, which includes, you know, probably rostering Ryan Rollins because you can give them the lowest minimum in the league. Right. Um, you know, like all these dollars matter, and that's why I think Otto Porter pretty much knows. Like they'd love to have him back; he's going to be in the rotation, but it would have to be on a vet minimum. Do you think that if they do not sign Otto Porter Jr. to a new deal, that maybe they could try and replace him with a you know a guy who could play uh, you know a little bit of the forward position? I don't know. Bonte and I were contemplate a little Carmelo Anthony, maybe <laughs> Anthony Slater. Whoa! <laughs> you, you like um, that, huh, Slater? You like that? Well. 
to Steve Kerr like that. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know. Otto Porter, so much of what he did last year was like, you know, more rugged than you'd expect. Right. Defense, rebound. And come on, you know, Carmelo can rebound a bit. I, I don't hate that idea. That seems like something like a Draymond Green would, um, you know, like. Uh, but I guess we'd know <laughs> on that. But my guess would be if Carmelo Anthony's playing another season, he's playing it in L.A. with LeBron. Man, ring chasing with the Warriors, 37.5% from three last year. Not the worst idea in the world. It's kind of laughable. No. Somebody brought up Dwight Howard. Now, that move would make me laugh because I just don't see him fitting in a locker room like that. If they can't re-sign Otto Porter Jr. and say, hypothetically, Looney leaves, what are some of the options for the Warriors? Is it is it Rajon Rondo as a backup point guard? Who who can they possibly go out there and get on minimum deals? Jeez, if, if Kavon Looney leaves, which at this point, like, is not expected at all. I mean, you have to like jump into the center market, and you know some of the center names that I floated out in that like disaster scenario for the Warriors, but like Andre Drummond or Javale McGee. Well, Javale McGee got full tax pair from Dallas. You know, Drummond got a small deal, but he's already committed to yeah. Philadelphia. So, you know, the market dries up quick there. It's part of the reason why like, they're just not going to lose. Come on, yeah. Luke, right? I yeah, mean, you just I'm can't. with you. Um, you know, but, but, you know, Porter does leave Peyton's already gone. Like they got to just go wing heavy. Like to me, they feel pretty set at, at point guard, you know, especially with Rollins coming in, um, big man. I mean, they're comfortable going into the season with Looney and, and Wiseman, but you got to do something in the wing spot. Uh, and the league is run by wings and you're just going to lose one with Peyton the second. So, you know, I don't know. I mean, Gary Harris was a name I thought maybe, like, you know, try to rehab his career, but he got paid. He got go paid back. in Orlando, yeah, $26 Yeah. Million. yeah. <laughs> so, um, we'll see. I mean, I think Bielitz is another guy that they, they've they've been wanting to bring back. I, I know there was rumors he might go back overseas, but I think he's got a veteran, veteran minimum uh, available to the Warriors, and that's, you know, at least he's a comfortable name they know they, they right. can put in a rotation. 95.7 Warriors insider Anthony Slater joining us here on 95.7 The Game to veer off from the Warriors for just a second, Anthony. Prior to NBA free agency officially starting, we got the news that Kevin Durant had requested a trade uh, from the Nets. Well, first off, it's a two-parter here. What was your initial reaction to seeing that news? And number two, I mean, which is the team that he could possibly go to here? You know, I think Phoenix is clearly where he seems to try to be directing himself. Um, you know, the Nets hold a lot of cards in this scenario with him, you know, being committed for eight seasons. That's something he never did with the Warriors or even back when I covered the Thunder. I mean, I covered four straight seasons where Kevin Durant was on a one-year deal, like impending creation. And through that, he controlled a lot of the process, you know, in some ways kind of hijacked the mood of the organization, uh, both organizations that I covered him playing for. Whereas, you know, the fact that he's, Long-term committed to four-year deals allows the Nets to canvas the league and you know probably go search for different offers that maybe we keep, we're not even thinking of. Uh, you know, like people were throwing out. You know, throw, uh, call the Cavaliers about Evan Mobley, call the Raptors about Scotty Barnes. I mean, you can kind of um, choose in a sense. But I think they're still in this league. Just knowing like the way Kevin Durant operates. I mean, if you're a team trading for him, you've got to kind of know he wants to come there. Or else it's you know very questionable to bring him into the organization or something just like this might happen. So uh, I think Phoenix is uh, Phoenix and Miami sound like the two favorites. Yeah. And of those two potential deals, to me, like Phoenix is if they if DeAndre Ayton would agree to a sign and trade him plus Bridges plus all their future picks. Cam Johnson like, maybe. Yeah, Cam Johnson maybe he's only on a five million dollar deal. You yeah. toss him in. Like that's that's an intriguing package. Now I hate that team formation for Brooklyn. Like if you have Bridges, Aiton, Ben Simmons, Cam Johnson, like yeah. you have no offensive creation. It's weird. But if we're just talking value, like that's, that's a lot of valuable, yeah. you know, weapons to kind of also remake your team. You can you can you know flip some of those guys later for for offensive creators. And, and you could recap, you could recap uh, or recoup those picks that you gave Houston for James Harden. I believe they got the next five first round picks of the Brooklyn yeah. Nets and Houston Rockets. So you could recoup some of those picks and have some first round picks there. You, you can, but you, you, one of the issues there is um, you can't just tear down and rebuild because no regardless of if you recoup the picks, you have Phoenix picks. You know, yeah. for example, if you do yeah. with Phoenix, and that's going to be in the twenties. Yep. You know, it may, it may be down the line. Chris Paul's getting old. Like maybe those do become. 
good picks in, in four years or so. But you can't stink because if you stink, everything's going to Houston anyway. Yep. So yep. Like, they're motivated to still remain competitive, which which also kind of tra- changes the trade scenario. Yeah, Kyrie Irving, too, on the block. A lot of people pointing uh, at the L.A. Lakers. We'll see what that. Um, what about KD to the Warriors? I mean, no, that's not happening. We know that. <laughs> But I was just saying, no, but, would but, be but, the end. no, yeah, no, it's not happening. We all know that. But quietly, the Warriors would have had the best package for the Brooklyn Nets for Kevin Durant. Yeah, I mean, the Warriors have the best package for name your star, and they have for a while now. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. And, and even more because, you know, last offseason when we were talking about these theoretical trades, it was like Wiggins was considered negative value. Now it's like if you got Wiggins, you're like, well, wow, nice. You can even extend them. Like, you right. got a. 27 year old wing kind of entering his prime who now has the championship and an all-star appearance um so like that's a more appealing like big ticket item in the package then plus like last year we were talking about pick seven pick 14 now you're talking about jonathan Kaminga, and moses moody who look like very good picks at seven and 14 so yeah it is a spectacular package but the problem is i mean we all know like the warriors don't want to trade it yeah and there's a reason it's a good package because it's right very valuable to the warriors also. And, they, and they don't want to deal with kd anymore right <laughs> i mean well i mean neither but this it's mutual we'll it's mutual no doubt the feeling is very mutual no doubt kyrie Irving, where do you think he ends up gosh i mean he's trying to get himself to la um <laughs> I, I mean like i can't imagine brooklyn wanting russell westbrook back but like if they are reforming a strange version of a team that now suddenly has Aiton and bridges for example maybe you take a gamble on westbrook you know cuz that team would need some offensive creation yeah and that's clearly what he wants and maybe you yeah. say yes with westbrook but give that 2027 and 2029 first rounder from the lakers wow. they completely unprotect that wow. and if lakers are willing to do that i mean why not if you're the next this league is incredible. <laughs> this league is absolutely incredible. We got we got the Philadelphia Rockets with Daryl Morey running the show. PJ Tucker back with Harden. Just unbelievable stuff. Slater, you've been on it, doing an incredible job. We'll be looking for your reports, and hopefully Looney does resign with the Warriors here in a few in the next few days. But you're right, the market is drying up for Looney, and this is probably his best destination. Uh, staying sticking with the Go to State Warriors, Anthony, you're the best man. All right, enjoy what Giants White Sox, the AL Central, hey, rolling hey, through. Hey, Slater, your Guardians are playing some good baseball right now. Your Guardians are looking good. I'm going to two or three games here. Uh, Giants baseball, man, they got nobody I want to watch. <laughs> don't even get me started on them, Slater. Please hey, don't. You want Jose Ramirez? you have to pay I'll, up for that. Dude, I would love Jose Ramirez. Love him. He's a beast. Man, I'd give up everything for Jose Ramirez. I'm a Ramirez. big Josh Naylor fan. I love that guy. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Hit a, hit another walk-off homer the other day. Yeah, <laughs> headbutting Tito Francona. <laughs> yep, yep. They still only pay about like $33 million total for their uh, you know entire salary. Not exactly Joe Lake of running. No, 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 hey, but you're, you're, you're balling the AL Central, a game back of the Twins, baby. Look at that. The Guardians making some noise out there in the American League. Anthony, man, get some rest, man, and we'll continue to follow your coverage. All right, fellas. All Thanks. right, Anthony Slater, the Athletic.